In this episode, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 available in beta, Steam for Mac code reveals Linux compatibility in the works, say goodbye to Linux on the PS3, Linux-based Android OS ported over to the iPhone, and the anatomy of Linux kernel shared memory. QuickSurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here, so do feel free to head on over to www.techpodcast.com. And if there's anything you like in my shows, there's tons of other shows over there that carry uh, lots of interesting stuff as well. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 10, Episode 11. From Insurance Networking World, there's a story here entitled Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 is available in beta. It starts off insurers who rely on Red Hat for insurance technology optimization can now install, test, and provide feedback for what the company expects will be one of its most ambitious and important operating platform releases to date, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. It's now available in beta. It blurs the lines between virtual, physical, and cloud computing to address shifts taking place in the modern IT environment. Features and updated core technology from the kernel to the application infrastructure to the development tool chain. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 is designed to meet the needs of the coming generations of hardware and software technologies. So in short, it's available. Uh, By all means, go to Red Hat, check it out. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools in the market that allow you to remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, simply the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. So why do so many IT professionals choose GoToAssist Express? The answer is, the answer is simple. It has exceptional performance, it's easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals don't have time to squander with a tool that is slow or unreliable. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast, you'll be on the client's computer troubleshooting in seconds, and it's consistently reliable. I've used GoToAssist Express many times to support my clients while uh, they were on the other side of town and I couldn't get there you know, fast enough to fix whatever their problem is if it was an emergency. So uh, it's, it's been a real lifesaver in many instances. My listeners can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my listeners can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From TechSpot, there's a story here entitled Steam for Mac Code Reveals Linux Compatibility is in the Works. This is pretty cool. The Phoenix over at Foronix have found compelling evidence that Valve has plans for a Linux-friendly version of Steam. After rummaging through the bash launcher used by Steam for Mac OS X, the site discovered code referring directly to Linux, something that isn't present on the Windows version of Steam. You can view the script after the break. Uh, The launcher checks the platform so that the appropriate library path can be added to the respective environment variable for loading Steam's shared libraries needed by the client. It then launches the Steam library, which prompts another conditional platform check. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Um, There's no word on when Steam for Linux is actually going to be available, but uh, this is good news. You know, obviously, if they're putting hooks in there, they have plans at some point in the future to add that support. So it's good stuff. From CNET News in the digital home section, there's a story entitled Say Goodbye to Linux on the PS3. This is a little disconcerting. Those who own an older PS3 version and currently run Linux on the console will want to listen up. A new firmware update coming down later this week will kill that installation. Bummer. 
According to Sony, it plans to release PlayStation 3 firmware version 3.21 on Thursday to achieve one goal, eliminate the other OS option currently available in all pre-slim models of the video game console. The feature allows PS3 owners to install an operating system in almost every case Linux onto PS3. So the decision to remove the other OS option is based on security concerns according to Sony. Why would they do that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, for those of you who have the older PS3, this is bad news. Uh, you know, by all means, you may want to look at other options for running Linux. If you, if you got to have Linux, it won't be on the older PS3 anymore. From Network World, uh, there's a story here. Linux-based Android OS ported to iPhone. This is pretty cool. A Linux... A programmer has created a video showing a jailbroken iPhone running both the Apple operating system and a second OS, the Linux-based Android firmware. The programmer is David Wong, who uses the handle Planet Being. In the video, he shows the first-generation iPhone running normally, then shuts it down. The port was done using a program Wong created called Open iBoot, which he unveiled in late 2008 to port and run Linux 2.6 on the iPhone. So in the video, he presses the open iBoot console to begin loading the Linux kernel. Eventually, the Android logo appears on screen. In less than two minutes, Android is booted, and Wong runs through a series of simple tasks, such as associating to a Wi-Fi network, bringing up the browser, which ironically has Google as its home page, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, obviously, it'll be... You know, for those of you who like Apple's hardware designs, not necessarily their operating systems, um, you know, this has potential to turn into a full on, you know, the iPhone hardware boots up into uh, Android. So w w I'll be keeping an eye on this, see what comes of it, and uh, we will definitely check it out. From IBM's website, there's a story here uh, entitled, actually it's a white paper, it's entitled Anatomy of a Linux Kernel Shared Memory. I thought I would include this uh, simply for those of you who may want to uh, educate yourselves on the inner workings of Linux. You know, I'm a geek, I'm always looking for technical geeky stuff to read, even though I may not necessarily have a need or use for it, it you know, it always pays to expand your knowledge base. So uh, definitely check this out, uh, it's pretty cool fairly in depth it's pretty long so uh you know but it's a good technical read for those of you who want it that'll pretty much wrap up this episode of linux news log as always thank you for watching and listening for those of you who do that please uh update your pod catchers uh, to the new rss feed subscription urls the latest show notes have them um, and with that, I thank you and I'll see you all on the next episode. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore bacon. It's all linked up in the show notes. So I'll see you then. Bye.